Hi everyone, I hope you're okay. Welcome to our live stream. It's Winging It episode 21, and just like we do every month, we're doing our live broadcast. So I do have my chat window open if you want to send a message. I can't reply via chat, but I can reply through the camera. So do say hello. I say, Karen, you're here already. Hello, good to have you with us. So um, I hope everybody's well. We are going to make our fourth piece for our, what month are we in? May, for our May page. So if I just bring in what I've got so far. So this is my page so far. And if you've been following along, you'll, you'll know what you're looking at here. So back in our first week, first week of the month we always do a colour prompt and the colour prompt was bright colours and it made me think about a project that I'd done back in the dark ages when I was at school in year seven or eight where we looked at fauvism and created a piece based on Matisse's goldfish painting and so I did my own variation and so that was our goldfish piece if you're new to winging it and you want to have a go at this piece the template for this panel is on our website which is www.featherstitchhouse.co.uk forward slash shop and it's right at the back end of the shop so you have to scroll through the pages and you can download that for free then we did i uh, we did a word prompt we always do a word prompt in week two and this month the word was slice and I have made no secret of the fact that I really don't like this panel. <laughs> you can't win them all. I do wing it just the same as you. So this was what I created. I wanted to do wedges and slices of citrus fruits because I liked this orange background. But this probably wins the prize for being my least favourite panel so far. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. And this this book I'll show you the other pages it's it's becoming a bit of a, a journal of my embroidery journey this year and playing along so I can almost I can I'm not going to talk about it here but I know why this one wasn't very good I, there was quite a lot going on um, at home in my personal life while I was filming for our May videos so my mind was elsewhere and so I, I wasn't feeling especially inspired so that's how that happened but you know I'll, I will always look back and remember what was going on while I was making these panels then last week we did flowers and the idea of this one was to play with our stitches that we'd been learning and use them in creative ways to make flower shapes so these weren't supposed to be sort of photographic flowers. These were just playful experimentations with the stitches that we've learned so far. So um, we've got some wheat ear stitch here. If I hold it up to the camera, hopefully it'll focus. We've got wheat ear stitch. There's bullion roses. We've got French knot flowers. And we've got, um, where is it? I've got my glasses. Oh, there we go. This one here is tête de burr stitch, so it's a chain stitch with two little straight stitches. And we've got lazy daisies, and we played around with a variation on tulip stitch here, and things like that. We've got another wheat ear stitch here. So we just played and put some beads on, because it was all looking a bit flat. So I'll put some beads on that one. So we're going to carry on playing it, and we're going to do our last panel. So... Let me just say hello to everybody. Hi Alison, glad that you're here. And Sue, Bridget, I'm so glad that you found us and I, I'm flattered that you like what we're doing. I um, hope you'll join in. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Ray, good to see you. And uh, it's not, yeah, do chat to each other in the chat just because I can't type. You all can. So um, chat to each other as well as to me. If there's anything that you want to ask while we're going, just ask away and there's a bit of a delay, so don't feel bad if you type something and it takes me a while to respond. I might be responding quicker than you think, but um, 
there's a delay in the broadcast so I get I get things about a minute or two before you see them so just while we're waiting for everybody to find us I thought we could just have a recap so this was our January page we started right back in January and if you are new to winging it you can go back and watch the introduction video that was um, right right the way back in December and it tells you all about why we're doing winking it and what the project is all about so January we started with straight stitch we were trying to build up our, our embroidery skills as we go along and so this was all straight stitches except for one solitary french knot here which doesn't belong and i should have done a cross stitch but i didn't um so we looked at monochrome and went through our prompts using straight stitches and variations of straight stitch and that was our january page and then i think we're all relieved in week five of january when we could use some color so monochrome is not really my style at all but the fifth week of january we did a skills based like a techniques week so we um wherever there's going to be a fifth week in the month we're going to look at fabric techniques and next week's is just absolutely fabulous i can't tell you how excited i am about it I haven't finished editing it yet um it's it's going to be an epic so uh, but it's so much fun so look out for that i'm going to set it as a premiere so that you get a little bit of, bit of a sneak peek early next week so that you can see where we're heading so we looked at applique in the fifth week of january and did lots of different types of applique and again the template for this is on our website in the same place as before so you can download the template for that if you want to make it then in February we looked at cold colours, so this was my February page and our stitches for February were um, laced stitches, so we used lots of whipped back stitch and laced back stitch and used Pekingese stitch here and created our panel, this was our cold colours, it was a northern lights piece inspired by cold colours and this was our live session where we learnt about paper piecing and my daughter appeared in that one who made a mini dress and plate some of you loved that and some of you absolutely hated it <laughs> um not everything is going to be for everybody it's fine um so that was that one and then march was yellow so this was our march page and in our live stream we did a another tree so we've we've done a winter tree and a tree in blossom and I did a laburnum tree and in our live stream we made these cute little fabric flowers made out of circles so we had quite a lot of fun with that one I think that one was very popular and then last month we did a bullion cluster in our live stream and put beads in and lots of exciting things and this one is one of my favorites so far the eggs in the nest again very divisive <laughs> people loved it or hated it so um yeah thank you for your comment about the nails i i do try to coordinate with what we're doing i never ever wear red nails but i think i might wear them more often because i'm loving it so um there we go so i'm it's a bit of a clue about what color our base is going to be so that's where we're up to so far and um i'm just going to have a quick look through the comments um ray happy holiday glad that you're tuning in <laughs> um and we're going to northumberland in the summer so do tell me what the highlights are so that we can uh, go and explore if you find it particularly if you find any nice tea shops let me know because i want to i just love tea and cake in the afternoon when i'm on holiday so um yeah i hope you have a really great time and i'm so touched that you've joined in anyway um just reading through oh thank you karen yeah it's i love that um that bullion cluster just noticing karen saying that this was one of her favorite panels so far i just loved making it and because it's just one stitch essentially i think i've got a few french knots in there as well just one stitch in lots of different types of thread and the beads just 
to make it come to life I think so thank you I'm glad you enjoyed that one I hope you're going to enjoy this one today now I've set up um I've set up my panel for this session so here we go this is what we're going to be working on I'm sorry that the camera's focus hunting a bit but it's so that I can hold it up close and you can still see it um so it's it's either fixed focus and you can't see up close or it focus hunts a little bit so I think the the consensus was that we liked auto focus um oh thank you Ray do let me know <laughs> um so we're gonna look at felt pennies today so I got I posted this in my stories on Instagram I got this book for my birthday a few weeks ago and I am absolutely loving it if you buy it this I, I'm not sponsored in any way I just share the things that I enjoy so this is a book that I've been taking inspiration on and up here you can see the idea that has inspired me this month so felt pennies were ways particularly during the depression in America the Great Depression people would reuse clothing and um, blankets and things like that that were worn out to create little circles to make floor coverings so they'd make rugs and um, mats and things like that and carpets on the floor and they were basically felt old jumpers so they'd wash them with lots of friction if you if you've ever shrunk a jumper you'll know how to do it by accident but if you wash wool on a very hot wash and apparently the the trick is to put a flip-flop in the wash with your jumpers <laughs> and it um, shrinks everything down and felts it and so you get a really dense fabric that won't um, it won't fray when you cut it and so they would do this with old clothes that were worn out and they'd use old pennies which were considerably bigger than the circles I've used to draw around them and then they would embellish them with embroidery so that's what we're going to base our panel on uh, this month so all I've done here is I've got my background panel and I had marked out a centimetre border but um, I've ironed it away I'm just going to have a sip of my tea in my winging it mug um, I don't know if you can see my daughter bought me this for my birthday it says just wing it and I am delighted by it so all I've done is cut out some circles and I've cut some in I'm playing with the idea so it's not going to be all felt I've got some fabric on here to get some patterns in as well so I've cut out some circles of different sizes so I think this blue one here is my biggest circle that's a 28 mil circle and this one is 25 mil that one's 22 mil and that one is 18 or 15 I can't remember just work it out if you haven't got a circle template just find some different sizes of things so that, that's oh, that's too big um but i've just cut out circles of different sizes and shapes in lots of brightly colored fabrics and felts and i've just laid them up and if i hold it up you can see i've just gone around with a single strand of thread i think they use machine cotton actually and just packed them down and i've got some rainbow coloured buttons I've also got this is very unlike me I've got my box of sequins because they're all set up everything I own is in rainbow order <laughs> so I don't know it's the only way that, look look there's my beads look in rainbow order um, so I've got some beads out I've got some sequins because I thought it might be nice to put some sequins at the center maybe of some of them like that and i've got some little buttons and bits and pieces but we're going to start off with the stitching and i thought we could just play around with some stitches and embellish our circle so this is um yeah i do like those <laughs> 
think they came from Asda, you know, in a box of sequins from Asda that I bought for the kids and we never really used them. I'm not very blingy, so I, I tend to not use sparkly stuff very often, but I think I need to start. So let's go in rainbow order. I've got some red and let's start off. Where's it going to look good? Let's put it on this green one. Let's start top left. So I'm going to start off with some blanket stitch just around the edge. So I'm just using my circles. I should also say I've not worried. So some of them are off centre like this one and I really don't mind. I thought we could just shuffle them around and let it be, let it be just uneven wherever. So I'm just going to go around this one with blanket stitch. Now I've had to remind myself how to do um, blanket stitch with Pico because I haven't used it since I did the tutorial <laughs> video. Um, so we'll come to that in a minute. I am a bit nervous about doing it live on camera because I might mess it up. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. So we're stitching. Let me know if you're stitching along. Or if you're stitching something else. And uh, let's see who's sewing and who's watching. We've just um, we've had quite a lazy morning. Mr T has um, been mowing the lawn. My daughter's been out on her skateboard. And sat through lunch with one elbow pad on because she thought she'd taken it off and hadn't. So she's been out doing that. I think they're going to the park to play football now. And other than that, we haven't done a whole heap of much this weekend. It's it's not been bad weather. We haven't had any rain, but. It's uh, it's not it's been it's looked warmer than it has been, so we thought it was going to be a nice day to go to the park yesterday, and it was a little bit chilly, so we didn't. Oh, Alison's cutting circles, jolly good. If you're wondering about my circle template that I use, by the way. Um, I just got this off Amazon. It came in a pack. So I've got this one, which is the one that I've used for these circles. I've got one with much bigger circles. And then I've got a couple that do ovals, things like that. Not very expensive. But it's better than... that. You can be precise about your circle sizes rather than just guessing and hunting around the house for circular things to draw around so I, I'd had enough of guesswork and so I thought I'm just going to get myself a circle template so one of the best investments I've ever made I have to say and again I'm not sponsored by Amazon I don't benefit in any way if you buy anything okay so we've got some blanket stitches around that one so I think oh, I've got a loop there hang on that come from? Let's see if I can get rid of that. I think it's on that last stitch that I did. There we go. See, all of this happens every time I film and I cut it all out. Please don't be under any illusion that I just stitch perfectly. Because I never do. I think it's right back at the beginning. I'm just going to have to pretend that's not there. Let's pretend there's not a loop at the back. It's hard to sew and talk at the same time. I'll use that as an excuse. Sue's joining in the um, A to Z book, so 
don't know if you've seen that i posted a video earlier in the week about how i set up my stitch book pages so i'm not going to go through it it's this um sampler book that i'm working on and it again it is inspired by a book that i got for my birthday i think back in 2020 and i thought how nice it would be to just learn all the stitches and have a play and it turned into this sampler book that i've been making and i posted a video on it and it's it's received quite a positive response which I was sort of surprised at because I didn't think I really did very much in that video um, but you never can tell what's going to go down well so um, it started a few people off experimenting with stitches and making sample pages so it's always nice to see people being inspired so um, I'll be interested to see see what stitches you found because one of them that I worked on this week must have taken me an hour and a half to master it was so difficult and how I'm going to make it into a reel that's no more than 30 seconds long is beyond me but we'll we'll have a play this week so yeah eye stitches are tricky <laughs> Oh wow, 30p circle template, that's impressive. I mean, mine wasn't expensive, but it wasn't that cheap. <laughs> it is, so it's, I'm loving the uh, book because you just get to play and find different ways of using stitches. And I do try, as I'm stitching the pages, to use the stitches in as many different ways as I can and they do tend to look quite pretty I think the pages but that isn't the intention the intention is to just play with the stitches so I'm just putting some French knots in the middle of this one just with my red and basically I've threaded up the needle with each colour thread and it's going to be a good way of me balancing out the colours because like I've, I've done two bits of red there now and I'm probably only going to get, in fact I'm going to move on, let's move on to orange, I'm probably only going to get another couple of details out of that red. So I've got a blanket stitch and French knot so I've got some orange here now and let's just go for it and do a blanket stitch with pico and hope that i can remember how to do it so blanket stitch with pico if you've never heard of it before it's like blanket stitch but it's a sort of our stitch of the month were combined stitches so they're all stitches that basically use the way you make a diff that two stitches combined together so look i'm i'm procrastinating because i'm nervous about doing it what's what's the worst that can happen so i'm going to start by making a blanket stitch and then i'm gonna rather than pulling it through i'm going to wrap my thread three times i think this is right no it's not right Scrap that. I'm gonna I'm gonna build up to blanket stitch with Pico. I'm too nervous. I'll calm down in a minute. Right, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna do wheat ear stitch around this one because I know I can do that one. <laughs> I think my problem is that I've learned so many new stitches this month with H and I that I my my brain is just full and I can't I can't remember anymore. So wheat ear stitch is a combination of fly stitch and chain stitch. This thread's too long. So we start off with a fly stitch. So we're gonna put so as if we're doing a running stitch, but we're gonna bring our needle up in between. 
those two stitches and pull it through and then rather than making a stick we're going to make a chain so I'm taking my needle back down and I can't do it by looping the needle so because it's too small so I'm just going to go down and come back up so make a little chain at the bottom and that's how we tilt it that's going at a funny angle okay I'm in concentration mode now it's very hard to I, I've been editing next week's video and you can I can really tell from the audio when I had to concentrate hard and when I didn't because my speech slows down so much and there are massive gaps in between all the words that I have to cut out because no one should have to listen to me <laughs> trying to do two things at once it's just unbearable so I'm trying to think what else we've been up to this month since we were last live so I've also uh, I'm working on a series of planet pieces so inspired by the solar system and I'm working through the solar system in embroidery so I've made Mercury Venus and Earth and my most recent one is the moon and pasted that as well so I've been working on that and the big piece of work this month has been getting my sunflower pattern ready for launch so that launched on Monday if you haven't seen that it's it's on special offer on our website until midnight tonight so um, you can add a, a sunflower PDF pattern and it gives you instructions to make three different variations so that's been the big piece of work this month it's, it takes it's not a straightforward process putting a, a pattern together but it seems to have gone down quite well right Karen, I noticed you're asking about the A to Z, so I'll just pause and bring the book back in and I'll just quickly explain. So basically I got a book that was a sort of A to Z, embroidery A to Z book and it just gives stitches in alphabetical order. So I thought I'd learn the A stitches and make a sampler page and so this was all the A stitches and I filmed the stitches and put them on my Instagram as reels and but you can still get them they're under highlights at the top of my profile page on Instagram you can see all the little circles with letters in and in there are all the stitch tutorials so this was my A page and I've put, I've put a felt A on it now because it didn't have that and so I've basically made sampler pages so all the tutorials are on my instagram and i just put them together like this playing around with the stitches and then i put them together into a book so i'm, I'm that was h that was the last one and i'm just about to start i so i make the pages in exactly the same way that i'm making my wing knit pages and I'll put I've put them together in exactly the same way as well so there's a video on how to join your pages coming out in the next couple of weeks so it's just learning stitches and making sampler pages where you play around and I've been polling my followers on Instagram so I 
put up some options of fabrics or colours. It was a fabric again this month. Next month I think it's going to be colours. And they vote on which fabric should inspire the colour scheme. And so I've got one page over here. This was what I put together in that video and this was the fabric that everybody chose. So it's going to be sort of purple, blue and this magenta colour and gold. And I've put some sequins on there, look. So that's what the A to Z is and it seems to be gaining a little bit of traction um, inexplicably to me. So <laughs> people are joining in and I just... it. It's the teacher in me. I just love learning and I I want to get better. So I I can say and I can do embroidery, but there's always room to improve, isn't there? There's always growth opportunities. So I wanted to just learn as many stitches as I could and play around and just develop my skills a little bit. So that's what the A to Z is. Right, this is taking forever and it's very uneven. <laughs> Never mind. Concentrating again. So I was asking my daughter and my husband what my conversation topic should be this week and they were keen to find out. They thought I should ask you what type of embroidery you enjoy doing. So do you like scenes? Do you enjoy florals? Do you have wall art? Do you make hoops to display or do you prefer embroidery to make things that are useful like needle books or tea cozies or bags or whatever or do you embroider on clothing what's your favorite type of thing to embroider I'm, I do try to do quite a lot of variety in our winging it panels so there's some abstract this one's more of an abstract one and some that are nature inspired and some that are sort of cutesy so the bird house is is very unlike me not my style at all um but that one seems to have gone down very well and the one that surprised me the most so far has been rain from back in April, the umbrellas, because I was almost embarrassed by that one because I thought it was rubbish and it was so popular. I, I, you never can tell what's going to work and what isn't. So, yeah, people seem to love the umbrellas. So it's grown on me. Lots of things grow on me over time. Yeah, uneven stitches trouble me no end. This is looking bizarre, this one. But it's a re it's a true record of what I did whilst live. So I will not be unpicking it. You'll be able to see when I post it on Instagram. You'll be able to see it is exactly as it was when I was on camera. So it will be what it will be. And I get my last stitch out of this tiny piece of thread. See, I'm at it again. Look, we've talked about this before. <laughs> Me using the last dregs of thread, even though it's impossible to sew with. I might just about manage. I'm going to have to re-thread. Karen, I, I learned cross stitch. That was one of the first things that I started with. My, my 
first thing was um, capability needlepoint or tapestry. It's not really tapestry, but it's just half cross stitches, and you do it with uh, cruel wool. So um, rather than thread, it's more like wool. And that that was my starting point. I think the first thing I sewed other than just playing around with Binka with my mum uh, was a picture of a tiger that I did that was sort of tapestry and I have no idea where that is now it's um, my parents moved house and many of my piece of art from GCSE disappeared in the process I was out of the country at the time so they couldn't ask me what I wanted but um, no there's no way I'm going to get a, a stitch out of that I can't sort of fumble about with it anymore I'm going to have to finish it off so I started out doing tapestry and then I moved on to cross stitch and I did loads and loads of stuff with cross stitch and I've got a drawer full of pieces here for cross stitch that I did but I just quite liked the idea of making my own designs I wasn't really very confident at all and I'm still not in many ways but I just love the idea of making my own designs so I started learning some embroidery stitches and my mum embroidered all the time when I was a child And I was always quite envious because she was so good. She's got these absolutely beautiful sort of woodland scenes, which are mushrooms. And this one's got squirrels in it and the other one's got mice in it. And it's mushrooms and plants and leaves. And she's got them framed on her wall. And they are so, so beautiful. And I was quite jealous. So I thought I need to learn embroidery because I just want to be able to make things like that. And, um, yeah, so I started teaching myself and I don't think I'll ever go back now because it, I just love it so much. I just love embroidery. I love everything about it. Right, I'm going for it. Blanket stitch with Pico. So I've got my first blanket stitch. I've remembered how to do it now. Wrap three times and... Pull through, that's right. Sorry, I had to stop and think then. My natural instinct is to go back through the, the felt, but you don't. So wrap three times, taking the needle, uh, the thread over the needle, and then I'm holding that those wraps in place. So that's the bullion knot part of it. And then you take your needle back under that vertical, and that forms your next blanket stitch. on to yellow now so I'll just do that again so over three times yeah I'm quite liking making books Alison just reading your comment there I don't know what I'm going to do with all these books, but I, I have made a snippet roll, and I can't remember where it is. So I have made a roll, but I, I just quite like quite like the size of these books that I'm making. So this this uh, this one's six inches square, and it's just a lovely size. I just love how tactile it is, and I've made I made a little sampler book for my sister and for my mum just in colours that they like and my daughter wants one but it's been a busy couple of months so I will get to it I might do it over the summer I just 
I like things that you can hold in your hand and look through. So Yeah, we um I'm sorry, I'm just reading the comments as I'm going. <laughs> Which I, I should have picked an easier stitch to do whilst reading comments. But um yeah, I think um I'm just looking at Karen your comment about uh preserving photos and things like that, making sampler books that might use photos. And I have done a piece in the past where I printed a photo onto fabric and stitched around it so you can do that um, you can get like fabric if you've got a, a inkjet printer you can uh, mount your fabric onto a piece of stick that paper and put it through the printer and it, it prints actually quite well and so I have had a go at that. We may yet do one that involves paper in the coming months. So I quite like stitching on paper, be punching. So I've noticed you've uh, said that you like black work as well. I've not done a whole lot of black work, but I, I just quite like the effect of black work. So black work tends to be on counted fabric. If you don't know what black work is, it's on counted fabric. So something like Ada or e some sort of even weave fabric. And it's a counted technique. So it's in the same family as cross stitch. And you use single strands, mostly of black thread, but I've seen lots of variations where people have done all sorts of different colours. Oh gosh, made a mistake there. It's me talking and that I've not joined up my blanket stitch there. I'll have to do a little fix of that. It's me talking and sewing at the same time. This stitch needs too much concentration. And you sort of make patterns out of a single strand of thread to form your shape. So you, you make an outline and then you put patterns inside it that are they tend to be quite geometric. Yeah, I don't know how many times I'll have to do blanket stitch with Pico before it becomes second nature. I'm, I feel like I'm making a right old mess of this. It's it's just one that needs some concentration, and I'm not concentrating on it entirely. And now I'm distracted by that missed stitch. There we go. When you're going under, sometimes it's easier to go through, particularly with felt because it's fluffy. It's easier sometimes to go through with the eye of your needle rather than the point. Um, printers are interesting things. I have heard it said that you can make transfers out of laser jets as well. So if you, I'm yet to try this. We might try it in a future video. If you print that design on a laser printer and then put it face down on fabric and iron the back, I have heard it said that it will transfer the ink onto your fabric but like I say I've never tried it and I've, I've had a sort of hit and miss approach with um, freezer paper 
it never does what it promises to do in my experience but I might just be using really ropey freezer paper there's all these tips and tricks see it's worth turning up just for the tips and tricks I learn as much from this as the next person so I'm just reading about <laughs> um, sewing through the felt now look learning about all your experimentations with printing yeah you can I yeah you can do it with freezer paper I think I've um I've not tried it myself but I think I just what did I use I can't even remember I think I bought sticky back paper that that you can use to print on fabric I think I bought specific paper but I think it worked with freezer paper I just my printer's quite old so I never quite trust things going through it it makes funny noises when you print on card so I'm always very careful about what I do with the grip I've just gone through and then I've taken it back and pulled it back out again Well, I have to say, I'm making a right big deal of this. <laughs> this is far from my neatest work. So what are we learning? We're learning that Rebecca can't cope with, le <laughs> with doing blanket stitch with Pico at the same time as speaking. This is <laughs> a shocking revelation. I could have told everybody this. <laughs> I didn't need to try it to find out. Too much concentration required. Keep doing it. Right, we're going to go back onto safer ground in a minute. I'm going to do some bullion knots. There we go. Right, thank goodness that's over. I've got all the way around. I do quite like the look of it, but um, I'm not sure the camera's picking it up to its best effect, and it will be improved no end when I just do a little sneaky fix of that missed one. There we go. So that's a really bad example of some really, or, well, it's a good example of some really scruffy looking blanket stitch with Pico. So the Pico is this little dot here that you make by making a sort of bullion knot and pulling it through before you form your stitch. I'm not happy with the way that's looking now either. Right, so let's, um, don't be alarmed by that, that's where I fixed that stitch. It's not yet another mistake. Right, I think I need another sip of tea. That was quite an ordeal, that. Right, let's get some green on the go. So you might not, you may have picked it up so far, you might not have done green is far and away my favorite color i absolutely love the color green i think it's just i just love it so i'm going to put some bullion knots on this one so i'm going just inside the inner circle there and this one i know that i can do whilst talking because we did it last month
we go. Little, little bullion knot. So I'm just going to put some bullion knots around the edge of this one. And I'm not going to do them all because we'll be here all day. But I'm just going to give you an idea. I'm going to do a beaded one in a second. So bullion knots, I've got a tutorial for those. So knots were on our stitches of April. We looked at French knots and bullion knots and pistol stitches. Oh, pistol stitches, we could do that as well. Um, that looks good around the edge, I think. So this one is it divides the public bullion knots. They um, people either love them or hate them. Some people think they look too much like maggots, and so don't like them. But I think they're ace. The only time I don't like bullion knots, I don't like them in red and pink because I think they look like intestines and I I always think it's a really good idea and then I start doing them and think it looks just disgusting and so you've got to be careful with your colour when you're, <laughs> um, you, yeah you've got to be careful with your colour with bullion knots because they can look really unpleasant but I mean, look at that. How can you not like that? It's gorgeous. How many wraps? I I do it by eye, Karen. So I'm looking to create, that's close to a centimetre there. From where my needle's gone in to where it's come out is close to a centimetre. So I just wrap until I've got roughly a centimetre on there. I've probably got a couple too many. And... I just hope for the best and I think it you get better with practice at judging how many wraps you need but you can also keep pulling so that one's looped up into a little bit of a bridge I don't know if you can see that it's got all like this space underneath it um, and I don't mind that at all So you just, I think practice helps and if I was using, I'm using two strands of embroidery thread here. So if I was using a pearl cotton or more strands I wouldn't need as many wraps. So I just keep going until it looks right on the needle and then pull it through. And for me the trick, I'm not using a milliner's needle at the moment because I'd threaded them all up with other things. But the best trick I've ever seen to help with bullion knots is the rolling. So if I show you what I mean. Sorry, I'm getting a bit short on thread again. So when you pull it through, I, if I bring it up as close as I can, I've got my finger on the wraps there. And if you're not using a milliner's needle, it can be tricky to get the eye through the wraps. So if you just roll it between your finger and thumb, it sort of loosens and then retightens the wraps and it just comes through much easier. And I can't remember where I picked that tip up, but it is a game changer with bullion knots. Once you know that you can do that, and it's not all going to come unravelled, you will find bullion knots much easier. So yeah, the twist is the thing. Right, so that one's going to have bullion knots on it. I'll come back and do the rest later. Let me do some pistol stitches now that I've mentioned them. Let's do some blue here. Right, I'm going to come in from close to the centre. So pistol stitches were 
the French knot on the end of a straight stitch. So you bring your needle up. few times like you're about to make a French knot and then wherever you want the knot to be that's where you take your needle back down don't pull too tight otherwise you'll cut your fabric so apart from that dodgy old uh, blanket stitch with pico. I'm quite liking the effect of this. It's, I mean, it's a loose interpretation of felt pennies. I'm <laughs> just noticing your comment, Karen. Um, <laughs> it's so it's such a relief that you um, you think that I'm able to do all three things at once because <laughs> I often feel like I'm making just a total hash of most of the things that I'm doing on camera. But <laughs> thank you, you're very kind. Maybe there. And then I'm going to do a beaded one. So I'm going to bust out the beads and then I might get some sequins and buttons on. And then I can, I can just make one so that it's finished. One or two. And then you can see where we're heading. And then I can do the rest after we've finished off camera. So that's my one with pistol stitches, quite like that one, looking quite fun. I, I always think it looks a bit ropey and then you put the embroidery on and everything just comes to life and I just love the effect that over stitching has, I think it's one of my trademarks is just putting a base together and then over stitching to add detail, it's, it's just one of my favourite thing to do, right, I'm just looking for a fine needle, I've got them all threaded off, off, off the screen, so I think I'm going to put some beads on, and I'm going to use these I think, so this week, just totally randomly, a friend of mine said that she'd been given a bag of craft stuff, and she doesn't really do craft, and so did I want it and I, I'm always willing to take anything like that <laughs> and it was full of beads I didn't expect there to be so many beads I thought it was just all going to be sewing I'm really nervous now about taking the lid off this <laughs> on camera because you just know what's going to happen oh no it's okay <laughs> there we go <laughs> I had visions of them catapulting everywhere so these were amongst that stash of beads and I've really struggled for yellow beads and sequins I can get gold but yellow I can't get and I've just inherited lots of sort of yellow beads and sequins and these lovely iridescent sequins I could have done with them back in March but they're just lovely 
so I've, it's given me the, it gave me a reason to re, reassign all my bead pots so that they're all fully in alphabetical order. So that made me very happy. So I'm going to put some beads on this one. I'm worried that my needle is going to be too big now. So what I'm going to do is just go around and put beads all around the edge of this green circle in the middle here. Move them so I can't do it on that bit. Lid on. Look, I don't want catastrophe. So these are sort of, they look purple, but then you look at them again and they look blue, and then you look at them again and they look sort of gold, and they've got this sort of iridescent quality to them that I quite like. But they, they're mostly bright purple. But yeah, I felt very lucky this week to have inherited so many gorgeous beads. Mostly beads and a few embroidery hoops. So I was very happy. Having a look at the uh, comments again. I, I'm lovely what you're saying about your fish eyes, Karen. Um, I, yeah, my problem with the fish one was that I forgot the fins until I looked at it and I couldn't work out what was going wrong, what what didn't look right. And they had no fins. So they looked like, they, you know, those um, oval rugby balls with the, with the sort of, lights on the end of them they look like those and I couldn't work out why and so I added in little fins so they could swim um, and just forgot about it in the video because my mind was on other things during that week so I think just leave it leave the fish eyes looking weird and by the end of the year you'll be looking back saying look how far I've come I didn't know that so I'm just looking at your comment about pistol stitch being called Italian knot stitch I didn't know that so I've only ever known them as pistol stitch that's good to know gives me another option right I'm gonna before I have a disaster. I'm going to knock that off at the back. I don't want to lose all my beads. So I, I just wanted to ask Ray if you're still there, Ray. I, I noticed that you said that the reception wasn't very good. Is there anything that you've done up in Northumberland that you would recommend if you've been to see anything or visit anywhere that you would recommend when we go in the summer? We're hoping to go over to Linda's farm. But other than that, oh, I just asked that. And Ray's going now. <laughs> um, I hope you pick up reception. Do message me if you can recommend anything up in Northumberland. Um, we've never been before, specifically. I've, I have been to the northeast several times, but we haven't specifically been for a, a holiday. So I've, I've yet to experience it as a tourist I've been up there for work but maybe that oh that looks fun there you go 
Ice Pack and the ones we came for. Might have to do another one now. Another dated one. Let's find some other beads. There were lots of orange beads in in my stash that I got this week as well. So maybe we could put some orange beads on. going to do a quick test to see that my needle goes through the bead. It's always better to find out at the beginning <laughs> rather than when you are halfway through. There we go, where could we put some orange ones? Maybe up here, let's put some in this one. So I'm just going to go around the outside of the green with these orange ones. Oh, I'm getting some recommendations. This is good. Um, right, good. How do you pronounce that? Is that Bam Bambra? Bambra Castle? Oh, that was that was the bead I was using. Hopeless. Um, oh. I want to say Bambra. Bambra? Yeah? Um, look, see, it's even worse. I've got my glasses around my neck. I'm going to have to do it. But look what happens. <laughs> That's why I don't wear them. Um, it's, it's why I can't, I can't see whether I've knotted it off or not. Suddenly, everything is transformed. <laughs> But I just won't look up very often because it's just terrible. Right, I've got some recommendations. So this is good. My daughter loves the beach. I have something of a problem with sand. When I say something of a problem, I hate sand and but my daughter loves it i love the sea and i love the coast and i love the beach but i i don't like sand because there are just too many bits it gets everywhere and i don't like the feel of it it sort of sets my teeth on edge and you always always get sand in your mouth it doesn't matter what you do um it it you always get sand in your mouth and if I think about it enough, I could, it could make me feel quite unwell. <laughs> so I just, I don't know. It's, I don't know what it is about sand that troubles me so much. So I do like pebbles. I like rock pooling, um, but sand is a problem for me. But we, we always go to the beach at least once. So if it's a nice beach, that will help me no end. So that's, that's good to that's good to know. Always good to get recommendations, I think. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with holidays. And I think partly I've got out of the habit because obviously we haven't been able to go anywhere for the last couple of years. This will be our first holiday for a good few years. And um, I don't know about you, some people seem to be able to just go into holiday mode immediately but I, I can't do it and it takes me 
three days to sort of relax into a holiday when I go away somewhere I, I just find it quite stressful until I settle into it and then I'm fine but the first few days uh, or the first couple of days I just find really difficult I'm a creature of habit I think and any any changes to routine really mess with me so I'm determined this time to just enjoy all of it um yeah we absolutely love Edinburgh it's one of the reasons why we're going up north I can't remember where we're staying um I know that Lindisfarne is easily accessible from wherever it is we're staying but um I I don't know Mr T has booked it all so um can't remember but I know that Lindisfarne is is easily accessible every now and again I get a bead that won't go through my needle and I swear I'm just putting them back in the pile and picking the same bead up over and over again um but we absolutely love Edinburgh um Miss City was uh, went to university there and we we went to Edinburgh on our honeymoon hundreds of years ago and um we just absolutely love it there we did one of those um you know the sort of grave robbers tours that the historical interest tours walking tours we did one of those and and Rick was chosen as the person that got whipped on the Market Cross. So there was there was a woman in a, a black cape whacking him with a rope and I thought I might pass out laughing. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It's just great, isn't it, when when your husband <laughs> gets tied to the Market Cross and beaten with a rope. So yeah, very amusing. So I, th I think some of my, my most fun and happiest memories are in Edinburgh. Absolutely love it. I think we've got we've got dreams of living there one day, but not for a while. Well, that's it's good to know that Lindisfarne's worth the trouble because we're we're quite keen to go, but um. I think sometimes you can build things up in your mind can't you and then they're they're a bit of a disappointment in reality so if it's if it comes recommended that's even better just realised I've gone the whole way around this without knotting it off at the back so I'm just really hoping that I don't have a disaster with the thread breaking because I'll lose them all oh, I'm quite liking the beads I might have to get some more beads in at some point I can't remember who it was. Who was cutting out circles? Was that Alison? How, how far through are you? Aren't they great, those orange ones? They're really bright orange. And I find it difficult to get these sort of solid colour beads. They're, they're always sort of glass or... These are glass beads, but I, they, they're they always sort of transparent or pearlescent or something like that. You, you can't often get beads that are just a flat colour like that so I don't have a huge number of them as you can see this part here but they are they are fun most of my beads I've picked up either in job lots on eBay or I've been given them so I I don't often buy beads for my own use. These are all sort of either reclaimed from jewellery or I've been given them or whatever. 
and I'm just building up my collection gradually but um, when I do buy them I get them from a company called Totally Bees which is a family company and they are just great they're so good great service and very helpful they're just fab a brilliant company right i think i'm gonna put some beads in the mid oh actually let's let's go for a sequin let's get some sequins going right i'm gonna do a sequin bead combination so it will take a minute because um because of the delay but if i bring in my sequin pot just so you can see it you choose what color sequin shall i put in the middle um, and while you're doing that, I'm going to put a button or two on. So um, let's. I should really get a bit more purple. <coughs> I haven't got a whole lot of purple going on. What do you think? Not sure. Let's get a red bead, a red button. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, I've got some green thread here. So let me. Yellow's going to look good. Because it's um, going to stand out against that red. Oh, jolly good. Alison's got all their circles on. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I'm loving. I'm loving seeing everybody's pieces they're they're just absolutely fab i can't tell you how touching it is that that so many people are doing it it just it just blows my mind I, because when i started doing this i didn't think anybody would be joining in and it is one of the highlights of my day when i see your versions and your interpretations of the fonts popping up on my feed on instagram it just makes me so happy just loving it so it's got a little red button in the middle there oh I should Karen I hadn't even thought about doing that googling shops in the northeast I was hoping I don't know if you have come across hello 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 hooray blog i can't even say it hello hooray blog um she's got a shop up in newcastle and she does workshops and things like that so i was hoping to pop in there which i know might be a bit of a drive we might do it on the way up or on the way down um but yeah i think i i might need to explore some shops and just see what i can find little independence always good aren't they just reading comments i have uh, not really thought about going to poundland and seeing what they've got i often we've only recently got a hobby crafting link and we are sort of in the dark ages um <laughs> uh in lincoln we're, we're sort of 50 years behind everybody else i think it's, it's quite it's it's not a, an up and coming trendy place to be so um but i do like it here that's not to be down on lincoln it's it's a lovely place to live but um yeah we've only just got hobby craft so it's it's got lots of quirky shops but um yeah there's there's not a lot of really exciting craft shops so and hobby craft has got no beads in it but i do go in every now and again and have a look at things like buttons and stuff like that just to see what's out there and pick up the odd thing every now and again but most of the things i get are reclaimed or salvaged or whatever because i just like salvaging things so alison thinks blue blue in the, the dark blue or the aqua like that that blue or do we get this aqua one let's have a look 
or the aqua disappears. I'm going to put this dark blue one on here. And I'm going to put it on with a French knot, I think. some pink thread and I'm going to just pop a French knot over the hole like that so I've got a French knot in the middle I quite like that and we'll do another one so I'm trying to keep it random I'm trying to keep the colour combinations pretty random across the piece so I'm trying to just looking for a bigger sequin I'm going to put another blue one up here I think come on look Got a green one. That's better. This is already blue there. So I'm gonna just use my pink again. So lots of ways of putting sequins on. You can um, just do bars over them. But I do quite like when I I don't use them. Oh, Crikey, I've just pulled it straight through. Um, I don't use them very often, but when I do use them quite like playing around maybe I need to put a bead I'm gonna put a bead on it so maybe a small ah, smaller sequin let's put an orange one see I'm just making it up as I'm going along oh no now I'm firing them everywhere let's put a smaller one on there we go flare it up no I don't like that And we'll do it with a bead but the needle's not going to go through the bead oh no we're having a crisis <laughs> um what have i got no my needle won't go through oh no danger danger go through no can't do a bead right let's just make this French knot work I'm just going to have to make it really big I don't really like doing more than two or three wraps on a French knot because it really turns it into something else there we go ah, that's on <laughs> thought we were going to have a crisis then right I'm just going to put some little tiny stitches around the edge there just straight stitches Oh, now the chat's moved on. <laughs> oh, how lovely to be close to Liberty. That would be a great place to go. Do you buy much fabric there, Karen? My son's in Reading and they're getting a tube stop. The new Elizabeth line apparently is going to terminate in Reading, so he's really excited because he loves London. I find London quite scary, but um, I don't. I like what's there, but I find just the number of people just scares me. 
get a bit overwhelmed not very good in crowds um so but I, I love the things that london offers so i do bite the bullet every so often but he's he loves london and he's so exciting he's so excited that he's going to have a tube station in reading Oh, I'm glad you like this, the French Night in the Sea, Quinn. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I did. I want to put one on with a bead. I'm going to show you. I'll get one of my small needles, just because I've got a massive needle here. So I've, I've got the wrong thread and the wrong needle, really, to um, show you. Let me show you a bead on a sequin, because they look just fab. So let's get one of these aqua ones. I feel like I've got to use one. Um, right, so let's get a what colour bead? Let's get a red bead. Got these are like the orange ones, so it's a solid colour again but um red this time but bees work an absolute treat i love bees on top of sequins so that's it with a bead i'll try to focus on my sequin top i just love that it literally looks like you just put a cherry on the top so um That's that one. Right, I'm going to put another couple of buttons on, I think, while I'm here. We're not far off being done. Let's put a yellow button over here. I'm just going to have to finish off those bullion knots. And there's a couple of circles that I haven't put any stitches on. But I don't want to keep you all afternoon, so... Um, Just go so far and then have our bond web. Yeah, I should have said so. The fabric circles are are bond webbed, so I bond webbed them to the felt, um, all except for this one, which just would not stick at all. So I just sewed that one on. So it's not that's not actually attached. I can get my needle underneath, it's not attached with bond web, but yeah, because the fabric frays, the bond web I'm using just really to stop it fraying when i'm sewing it so that's really what the bond web's for because there's enough stitching for it to hold in place by itself but um yeah just i don't i don't want the fabric to all start shredding when i start putting the needle through it so yeah that's what i did but the felt i've just stitched on um just like we normally do with uh when we're doing applique with felt. Um, what else can I do? Uh, I'm trying to think of things I haven't done. What about if we finish off with some tulip stitch? Because I haven't used much tulip stitch this month, even though I, it's one of my favourites and I really like it. I've got some purple thread here. So tulip stitch, if you remember, was a chain stitch with a stick and just going onto the blue and then you add a little fly stitch using the same stick
just a little bee wanted to make the same stalk and that's your tulip stitch I, I really like tulip stitch I think it's so cute there we go I think I think you just forget about stitches I don't know about you I go through phases where I use a I use one stitch all the time and then I remember another stitch that I really love and go through a phase of using that so I don't know whether anybody else works like that but I think you sort of get into ruts a little bit sometimes and I like one of the things I'm really enjoying about putting the wing in it videos together is that because I'm trying really hard to use our stitches of the month each month um, it, it forces me to think about using stitches that I I wouldn't normally be using so I have my go-to stitches that I use all the time but because I'm, I'm intentionally getting uh, stitches of the month in I, I just force myself to use different ones and it, it's just been so good for me to force myself to do that otherwise you just stitch the same things in the same way all the time so it's it's making me think creatively about how to use stitches trying to catch up with the chat <laughs> yeah I've had um, I think a good question to ask is how does she know these things so in terms of the fraying you need to ask how does she know that the fabric will just shred if you start embroidering it without bond web um, I can't tell you the number of times I've had to restart something because I've not bond webbed fabric and then started embroidering it and the needle just pulls the fibres of the the weave of the fabric apart and it just shreds before your very eyes and you have to start again so um, I think even though that orange circle can't find it now where is it that orange stripy circle underneath there even though it didn't stick I'm still I still would have bond webbed it because it's allowed me to sew it without the fabric just peeling away and disintegrating under the needle so it's one of the reasons why I enjoy sewing on felt so much because you don't have that problem ever because um, it does it doesn't fray and the felt that we use is so robust it's the best alternative to wool felt I've I've ever come across I, I do I do have wool felt and I do use it sometimes and that the slices piece was a piece of wool felt and I've got some craft felt just acrylic felt cheap as chips um, that I hardly ever use it's in a drawer that's that's the one that my daughter is free to help herself from because I hardly ever use it because you can't embroider on it it just it disintegrates but this cooning felt is so robust it, it behaves like wool felt it's it's been a revelation to me so I use it all the time now nearly everything I do is on cooning felt so I feel like I need one more button so that I've got two I need a third one maybe in here I'm gonna put another button there probably that one maybe um, there and oh gosh shall I have one up there as well I don't have any buttons over this side
looking orange one would look good there something like that so it's going to look something like that when it's done um so i'm going to finish off these bullion knots and add a bit of stitch to this one and um i'm not i'm absolutely not going to redo that <laughs> that um blanket stitch with pico even though everything in me wants to just unpick it and do it again i'm not going to do it so i'm just going to add a bit more stitch to these and oh, what shall i put at the center of that one i feel like it needs something yellow maybe something purple purple button didn't stand out enough uh, that one's better there and then maybe I can put a yellow one something like that that's how it's going to look so that gives you an idea of what the finished piece is going to look like oh, that's odd. so if I just carefully lift it up that's going to be our felt buttons square I think that's fun <laughs> quite pleased with that I might need to do another beaded one I might have to put some more beads around might do some beads around the outside of this one or maybe this one maybe put some beads in between the bullion knot something like that just so that I've got three with beads on as we go around so if I pull in my page let me move these out of the way that's going to sit there like that now normally the sharp hide amongst you will know that normally my um my live stream piece goes in this corner but what i've tried to do is this page is going to go on the back of this one and what i've tried to do is all my buttons and beads are going to fall off now is do it so that my pastel blue and my bright blue go back to back my pastel orange and my bright orange go back to back and that meant that I had to switch around I wanted the green for the flowers one because I wanted the green background um, so I've had to swap around my pieces so my pastel and my bright page is going to go back to back like that and the colours are going to match so there is a plan I haven't just made a mistake there is a plan in what I'm doing so <laughs> That's why it's in a slightly different place this time. So that's going to go there and that's going to be our bright page for this month. So I am going to, well, let me ask you, um, I'm going to add some stitching. I'm probably going to do tulip stitch uh, to join the pages together. I've, I've tacked them, so I've put little tiny running stitches in just to hold them together and then I'll over stitch with some decorative stitch so would it be helpful to for me to film that um, would would you like a refresher on how to put a page together or should I just do should I just do it and post a photo I'm happy to do either it's entirely up to you um, but I'm happy to film that process if you want me to and this week when I've done that I've already done my tab for May. I don't like it, but I used I used tulip stitch and I did some weekly stitch lines. I used tulip stitch to make the letters and I, I don't like it at all. But um never mind. <laughs> it is what it is. So I've already got my tag in place tab in place for May and um I just love that so much. It was a bit of an experiment. I made the letters out of bullion knots and I, I can't stop looking at it it's just it's ridiculous I need to grow up um, <laughs> so I'm going to put that on the back and then I will film this week a video outlining 
how to join the pages together so I do quite like the way the pages come together when you put all the panels and make them into the four I just I think it just works uh, and that's not entirely by design but I just love the effect of the four panels together so that's our stitch along for this week so I'll post this in a little while when I've just finished stitching it I'll put it on Instagram the finished one so I hope you've enjoyed that I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with felt buttons and thank you so much for tuning in and I'm gonna finish there so have a great week and I will see you next week please do look out for the premiere tab uh, the premiere thumbnail for next week's video I might just do I do I dare flash it under the camera for a moment I'm gonna move it under the camera really quickly <laughs> um, I'm gonna move it under the camera really quickly <laughs> there we go that's what we're going to be doing next week and it's one of my favorite things that I've ever done I've had so much fun I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed doing it so um, I think it's going to be a really good one so do tune in for that one next week it's going to be quite exciting and we're going to learn a lot I think so lots and lots of techniques so 11 techniques in total so yeah have a great week and I will see you in the next video and see you back here next month for our June live stream. See you all soon. Ray, happy holidays. Hope you have a great time and any recommendations will be gratefully received. Have loads of fun and I'll see you soon. Bye.